Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, today I'm here to talk about the Android SDK tools in Debian. This project is a Google Sum of Code project in 2015 and 2016 we've been working on. Uh, there are three Indian students and I work on this project. We, in this project, we package, basically package Android SDK into Debian. And so why are we doing this? The first reason is the, the SDK from Google is not free software. It, the, the bundle, the, the SDK bundle downloaded from the website is not free software. It, uh, it's not Apache 2.0, it's proprietary. Uh, if you use that, you will have uh, some limitations. For example, you can't load any SDK component onto a mobile device, or you can't even use the SDK to develop applications for, for platforms other than Android. And the next reason is um, by uh, packaging SDK into Debian, we can build it from source and we can assume that the S uh, we can make sure the SDK is reproducible and we can make sure the SDK produced uh, can produce a reproducible APKs. For example, my, my mentor, uh, Hans Christoph Steiner, has uh, passed ZipLin to uh, add an option to zip out the timestamps inside the APKs. And, uh, and we can also deploy f uh, completely free F-Droid build servers uh, using, uh, provided that Android SDK is in Debian, so we can just uh, use one line of command and you can install everything to deploy a, a build server of F-Droid. It's like Debian. Uh, it's like Debian's build D, you upload the Android source code to the server and it builds for you. And, and having Android SDK in Debian also is um, can is handy for if you if you are gonna root your phone or you you are gonna flash your rooms you can just install ADB and Fastboot. Actually, most of the people don't need other components in the SDK. They only need ADB and Fastboot. And if you if you uh, with if ADB and Fastboot are in Debian, then you can just uh, install this tool. You don't need to download the entire SDK. And the last reason, which is the most important one, is, is uh, packaging Android SDK into Debian. We can prevent, uh, prevent the Xcode ghost on Android. Xcode ghost is an uh, iOS virus uh, broke up in last year. It was, uh, there were about 1,000 applications was, were infected by this virus. Uh, first, uh, most of them are Chinese apps. Uh, those Chinese developers are Sometimes they have difficulties on accessing uh, App Store to download the Xcode. It is very slow to download the Xcode from App Store. So you, uh, they, what they do is to uh, download the SDK, uh, download Xcode from web drives like Baidu web drive or other places and they are unofficial and maybe they are modified and actually they are modified, planted with Xcode Ghost and all application compiled with that Xcode code, uh, with that Xcode is planted by uh, with Xcode Ghost, and these apps are uploaded to App Store, and you just you just download the App Store, download the apps from the App Store, and you get infected by the virus. It's it's terrible. You can't do anything if you are ordinary user. So in an, in Android, it's way worse because in China, every piece of Google is blocked, so you can't. It, Download the SDK without using a VPN. So I think I think many Chinese developers uh, only only download SDK from from some unofficial places, and perhaps these these Android SDK has been planted with some virus. I don't know, but perhaps. So uh, if uh, say if we can download the SDK from Debian, and everyone can get this SDK all around the world. And and we can make sure these SDKs are uh, is unmodified and without any virus, and we can prevent Xcode goals happening on Android. So uh, the current goal of this project is that we are we are making sure that we can have a minimalist build environment um, on on Debian. You can just uh, build the apps using one command line, Gradle, Assemble. And that's it. We are not doing we are not doing the full environment yet because they are too big. Um, we are additionally we have well, we will do NDK 
and uh, support library and the Google libraries because uh, because they are they are necessary sometimes necessary to build uh, Android apps and the NDK are, is too complicated to to build from source for now so we are doing it uh, using a, a via installer package and the Google libraries are proprietary software so they are also via uh, installer libraries uh, installer package sorry and we are not doing the emulator or system image for now because the system image is basically a, an entire Android system and it needs to build from uh, several GB of source code. It's too big and practical for, for, for doing in Debian so, so it can be ignored for now. But we can still do it uh, with uh, installer packages. Uh, and the Android Studio is also too big for us so we are not, we are not doing this for now. And during the, the project, we, we met some difficulties. The, actually, the first one is that there is, there is, uh, they have too many versions. The SDK has their own version. And the SDK has basically has three components, the SDK tools, the build tools, and platform tools. And all of them have different versions. And Android has an API level. And Android has its own version. So we are not. Uh, we don't know how we we didn't know in the first place how to which tag should check out in the git repo to to download the the tarball. But uh, finally, we settled down with the Android version. We check out the Android version of the uh, in the git repo to get the upstream. And the, and there is another difficult there is another problem is that these components in the SDK typically has uh, some of them have circular dependencies. For example, uh, we have these two uh, source packages. And one, is f one produces ADB, fastboot, liblog, and lib blah, blah, blah. And the other uh, repository uh, has, has these two F2, FS utils, and ext4 utils. And turns out that fastboot depends on these two libraries. And these two libraries uh, depends on back to liblog and these two packages have circular dependencies. And what, and what we did to solve this issue is that we use build profiles. Uh, build profiles is a mechanism that you can, uh, you can make the package uh, produce some components in stage one and produce the rest of the components in stage two. So we can, um, what we did is that the first Android platform system core uh, produce ADB and, and lots of things, uh, except for fastboot in stage one, and then we and then we have uh, Android platform system access for these two libraries, and then we produce the fastboot at a full stage of of that uh, repository. Then it it solves the circular uh, circular dependencies. So and. We have other difficulties like uh, some components have a need to uh, need multiple upstream repos. For example, the Android.jar, which is the Android platform framework uh, API stops. It's only an API stop, but it needs four repos from the Android repositories. And we don't like to merge multiple upstream into one package, but we have to in this case. And there's a there are also difficulties that the uh, Android, the Android source code does not have a, a usable build system, a small build system. It doesn't have this. Uh, they have an Android.mk in every in every directory, and we can uh, we can only read the Android.mk to handwrite the make file to to uh, to compile the libraries. It is handwritten, so it's error prone, and it needs too much work effort. So perhaps uh, in the future we can we can develop some script to interpret Android.mk and automatically generate the make files. And some 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 Android repos have uh, have C C++ project as well as Java projects. So it's it's quite tricky to to deal with a package with two languages. And, and finally, Google also forked a lot of things 
I say he he forked because uh, he used uh, Google used those third party libraries, but he also makes some little modifications. Uh, maybe you, you are not aware of that, but he just just make modifications, and sometimes the modifications are are big to are so big that you can't even build a project using the the upstream uh, upstream libraries and uh, so far we have packaged two upstream libraries that's uh, modified by Google which is libunwind and libse Linux they are totally uh, they won't interfere with the existing uh, libraries in the system so so uh, and we we also we also package doc lava which is which is uh, necessary to build the Android dot jar, and they also they also fault open SSL, which is boring SSL. But uh, we are, we don't uh, but we don't need to package boring SSL anymore because we later out li later on found that uh, boring SSL is not necessary to build the Android dot jar, and also the Debian security team also object to this idea. So the progress so far is that we have updated Gradle to 2.0. Before we did Google Sum of Code, uh, back in 2015, Gradle was still version 1.5. And now it's 2.13, I, I guess. And we updated Gradle because we need to use the Gradle plugin. And now the Gradle plugin is also inside Debian. But, but but the artifacts are not installed into Maven repos, so so basically it's it's quite hard to use right now. But we will polish the package later on. And the Android.jar is almost done. Um, and we have, uh, as we as I have said, Android SDK has three components: platform tools and SDK tools and build tools and we have packaged most of the platform tools here, as we can as we can see, and we have packaged some of the build tools. Um, but we we haven't been dealing with any SDK tools yet, but we will we will do that later on. But um, so overall, this SDK is not usable for now, because we we have been uh, testing to using this SDK to build a. Uh, Minimalist Gradle apps, uh, Android apps, and it it just it just has errors, so it's not usable for now. But we will we will uh, we are making progress. So um, we are making progress, but the pro progress is slow. So if anyone is interested in this project, or uh, you can join us, or anyone has some question, we can you can ask us on these two IRC live. IRC channel, Debian Mobile. We 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 will usually be in Debian Mobile channel, and we are uh, we usually put uh, put most of our information into the Android Tools wiki page. So, um, any question here? Uh, what's the uh, long-term goal? Uh, do you plan, for example, for Android uh, uh, in Debian to be, for example, usable in with official Android Studio or other uh, IDEs like, I don't know, IntelliJ or something like this? Do you want uh, f for it to be usable with uh, official emulators? What's the longer-term goal? Well, longer-term is that uh, that those emulator and those emulators and system image will be will be uh, packaged using an installer package. So it's it's part it's some kind of non-free software because it's mm -hmm. hard to build from source. Yeah. And and now the goal is that we are building a, a command line environment. We can just build the apps using command line. We are not doing the IDE for now. Because it's too big. Um, um, I'm not asking about uh, packaging IDEs, but uh, for example, uh, in when I'm installing Android Studio, for example, I can point it to already existing SDK on the disk. 
So do you plan to provide something like this? So, so I'm installing all Android Debian packages, then I'm installing per Android Studio, and then I'm pointing it to USR Lib Android Studio Microsoft, Android SDK something else. Well, that is in our discussion now. We we think we can do that because uh, I, I don't we don't want our Android SDK in Debian is so limited. So uh, I think we can uh, solve this problem. We we can just patch the the code. Okay. Thank you. Hello. How do you deal with uh, do you package also Bionic libc and other core components to get a tool chain so you can build this application? And then when you this is one question. And then you, when you get the application, do you have some kind of compatible layer that you can run the application in the Debian system or like hybrid library that provides? Uh, like I'm sorry, I I I, <laughs> I can't understand. Yeah. Uh, okay. And this is Chiraru Desai. He's uh, one of the students working on this project. Thank you, Peichung. Uh, I'm also working on this. Uh, Bionic is uh, used in the user space of Android. So that is not something we are packaging right now. What we are working on is getting the Android SDK into Debian so uh, developers can build applications. Then as for some sort of a hybrid layer, uh, we uh, haven't. We aren't working on anything like uh, that right now, or uh, we don't have it planned. But uh, what we are saying, it's we haven't really thought about it. It would be quite complicated to try to run an Android app to try to get the Android Java virtual machine running on Debian, and then try to run an Android app. So and Bionic is also the Android libc. We uh, we are not using that. We don't need that to build apps. It's in the NDK that that's also something we are not doing right now. Any other questions? Uh, roughly, could you estimate what's your sort of percentage completion progress and how many more people would you need to get this done and say before before Android 7 gets released? Um, right now, I would say that we are kind of halfway through the SDK thing. We have identified what we need to fix. Uh, like we have this one strange bug with apt where it's an Android tool. And if we use the binary Google provides, it will work. If I compile the binary myself from the Android sources, it will work. But if we use the handwritten make file that uh, he wrote, and if we try to compile the binary with that, it crashes. We have yet to debug that. But that's kind of some of the challenges we are facing. So it's, but uh, apart from that, we have everything in place. So we just need to fill in the missing missing stuff, and we should be able to build. I would say a majority of the Android apps on Debian uh, by the time GSOC ends. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, by the time we are done with GSOC in August, we should be able to build a lot of the Android apps. Okay. So any other questions?